going? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. God, indivisible. Okay, first I, I want to apologize uh, for starting a little late tonight. Be, uh, we were doing some interviews for uh, the opening on the park board. So um, so let's get going. Uh, first thing, uh, approve the agenda. Is there any questions or changes or additions to tonight's agenda? If not, I guess I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second by Pat Scripture. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, the agenda is approved. So, first thing is, uh, is this the second reading now? Yeah, second reading. Second reading of uh, the change in our parking um, was a restrictive parking policy? Ordinance, yes. Report, ordinance. Does anyone have any questions or any feedback or anything in regards to this? Well, so this, the first page, that's, that's from the last meeting. So I was reading it as saying that it was the first reading and I was, okay. Right. I got it. I think the second page is the actual, um, that would be the actual ordinance that we did do the first reading on right uh, last uh, meeting we had yep okay any uh, other comments or well I think we need to dispense with the reading of it just because of the wording in the home rule charter right okay uh, great notification on that so we're going to dispense with the reading uh, if, uh, if there's no other further questions I guess uh, I look for a motion to approve the, the second reading in the ordinance, Ken, because then it goes to our 30 day. Then we'll have to publi publish uh, it. Publish it, and since the new charter is not yet in effect, we do have to wait the 30 days, 30 days after publication. Correct. Okay. Make a motion. Okay, got a motion by Dave Bruzik. Second. Second by Amy Jurek. There's no other comments. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. We have the second reading, and we'll get that published in uh, 30 days from now. It should be a done deal. Okay. Sure. Where did this go? <laughs> <laughs> Probably underneath. How come you got a different one? Glenn to the rescue. A little technical difficulties here. Are you back? Yep, I'm on. Okay, good. <laughs> Jim, Glenn, thank you for uh, the hard work on that. Mm-hmm. Next, Ken, I assume you're taking this since it's from you. I um, will. I don't have a... Audit of the commercial properties and... Yeah, I, I don't have a formal presentation or anything, but as we do every year, um, we do a couple of different reports, and I've actually just put them into one agenda item tonight here. So first of all, we have our uh, annual commercial building audit, basically what I do, and uh, sometimes uh, include the chamber if we have a lot of changes, but uh, basically uh, drive around town, visit businesses, and see what changes have occurred over the past year. And uh, did that back on January 15th this year. And uh, wanted to note we had 18 new business openings, and that includes not just in New Prague, but kind of in the peripheral area around New Prague. Um, we'll go out a few miles and, and get those areas as well. Um, that includes startups, uh, businesses moving into Dupreg, et cetera. And uh, we had 21 business closings and or changes. And actually, most of those were not actually closings or businesses that move out of Dupreg. Uh, a lot of those are simply uh, businesses that moved into new locations, um, a lot of them in the downtown area. And then uh, other ones, maybe that a change in ownership, change in business name, uh, et cetera. So 
Uh, finally, the, the main stat we note is the uh, vacancies of different commercial spaces that we have, and we have 32 of those, and that could be anywhere from a, a whole building to a, a single tenant space. So these stats are actually very similar to what we've had the past number of years when we've done the report. It doesn't usually vary a whole lot. We have generally these same numbers of openings, closings, and, and vacancies. So um, just point out uh, some of the new businesses that are notable would include O'Reilly Auto Parts, uh, the Soak Laundromat, which moved into the uh, vacant space that was uh, once occupied by Heritex. Uh Deleco Arts opened in the uh, theater downtown, so it was actually operating as a theater again. Um, Thomas uh, Lucan Photography had been there previously. Uh, new Salon opened in a vacant building. That little uh, Quonset hut type looking <laughs> building um, kind of set back from Main Street uh, just to the east of uh, Snap Fitness. So that was a new business that opened up there. Uh, Hollow Point Firearms opened in the uh, vacant space that was just to the west of uh, Chameleon Cafe. Uh, Forever Nutrition, very small, um, <coughs> kind of a smoothie shop for the health kind of focus opened in a vacant spot on uh, Main Street, uh, somewhat near the post office. And then Keller Williams Realty opened an office on uh, just north of Main Street on Central Avenue. So those are some of the notable ones. If you read through the report, um, and I also will have this online uh, tomorrow, um, shows all the changes highlighted in yellow if you want to see the full detailed report. Some of the changes note, uh, Dairy Queen had a full uh, exterior renovation if you've been by there recently. Um, ConAgra Mill was purchased by Miller Milling. Um, Alco will be closing in 2015, so we've noted that in the report. Uh, Prairie Ponds new patio opened <coughs> this spring, and then um, H&R Block moved from the strip mall, which opened up a space and uh, in the strip mall there, and they moved to the old uh, Main Street Dental and the clinic building uh, just to the east of St. Once. So, um, Nothing are, they, concerning. are they occupying the whole building? They are not occupying okay. the whole building. They actually have some space for rent in there, uh, which is actually noted as one of the vacancies in, in the uh, report here. So we do. I do want to note we do uh, advertise properties that people have available. If they would like to, we put it on our EDA website. And occasionally we get <coughs> calls about uh, things that are on there. Um, but we offer that to anybody basically free of charge. If they want to submit their information, we'll just post it on there. So. I did notice, uh, you know, in some of the descriptives, uh, you talked about apartments upstairs. Yes. Are those actually approved apartments or, you know, or are they just could be a possible apartments that, or at one time they were apartments? Um, anytime we've noted an apartment above the uh, second floor, they actually are um, an Being used occupiable like, oh. apartment, I guess is the best way to put it. It okay. doesn't mean that all of them are necessarily full at this point, but. Okay. They're there and could be occupied. Okay. Ken, there's a property at 101 Main Street West, just east of uh, Pioneer Bar. Yeah. Is is that owned by somebody? Is it available? Because it's not on the list here. Yeah, that's actually owned by Gary Staber. And, um, well, it should have been on the list if it is not. If you look on what page five. Yep. 103 is there, 101 is not, unless it's someplace else. I don't know. It could be. I'll check that because all these aren't necessarily in an order. Okay. Uh, if it's not, I'll add that on there. 101. Not even halfway. On Main Street West. Oh, there it is. It, yep. There it is. There it it's is. there. Yep. Thank you. What about, um, do we know anything about McDonald's? As far as their new property yes well they do own the lot uh, just to the west of O'Reilly Auto Parts out there but at this point um, don't have any indication from them when they may or may not build a new building out there we did have an approved building permit we actually did um, send that back to them they paid their review fee but basically the permit was canceled out uh, so they could reapply at any point and construct so we just don't know the timing but yeah, they do own the lot. Corporate McDonald's, I should right. know. So that's the business audit. Uh, the other report, uh, which I normally have done in the past separately, is our vacant lot inventory. And pretty self-explanatory. Again, this will be online tomorrow. 
uh, for the public to take a look at. But we just inventory all of our uh, available uh, vacant uh, commercial, industrial, and residential properties. And not too many changes, again, on the uh, commercial. Uh, the only real change we had on there was removing the O'Reilly and the McDonald's lots, which were purchased in the last year um, out in front of Coborn. So that was the only change to note on there. Um, other than that, our uh, industrial land, uh, we only have that one one acre parcel just north of the fire station. The other parcels are owned by Randy Kubish and uh, the Moxa family uh, that are outside city limits, but we've been talking about that with the EDA and the council for uh, a couple years. And then uh, residential properties, we are finally below 250 lots for uh, available residential lots. So. Um, wasn't that long ago we were over 350 so making headway uh, and getting that number down but we still have a good variety of lots and uh, considering what I'm hearing from some neighboring communities particularly to the north um, <coughs> might be to our advantage to have some lots available uh, at this point so we'll kind of leave it leave it at that yeah I um, was at a Lesseur County meeting on uh, Thursday and uh, I guess the company that was going to, we could buy that land just south of Walgreens. Mm -hmm. They donated that to the sheriff's children oh, deal sure. or something like that, which now they have ownership of it. And if they sell it, they, they can use mm -hmm. the funds for their programs. So I don't know if you've heard that, but I had actually talked to, I forget who exactly from that organization, but they were thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that, that's what I was told uh, on Thursday, so. Okay, as long as they mow it. <laughs> <laughs> and I had told them up front they need to continue to maintain it, so yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Well, Jim will have no problem talking to the sheriff's department, telling them to mow that ding place. Huh? <laughs> Whatever's in the best interest of the city. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, good. Any questions for Ken? Yeah, I kind of agree with you on the statement that uh, it's good to have some available lots because I think, you know, with Shutterbug or whatever starting in Shutterfly and, Shutterfly the, and then uh, the other companies in, in uh, Shakopee that are opening and, you know, we might see some activity. Hmm. So, good. Okay, that uh, was just for information only. There's no action required. So, next. I guess you're taking over for Patty on this, who took I, over for Mike. I have so. all the notes for, <laughs> from Patty. Uh, she couldn't be here tonight, uh, was not feeling well. Um, in effect, um, in preparation for the 2014 audit, um, Patty and the auditors took a look at all the uh, city funds uh, and, and uh, compared that with accounting practices, policies, and standards. And uh, based on their conversations with the auditors, uh, they've recommended the following transfers and closures of funds. So I'll run through the list real quickly here, noting some of the things that uh, Patty wanted me to pass along. Uh, the investment fund number 105, essentially what that was is a, a very old fund sold that neither Patty or any other staff around here or the auditors knew exactly what that was for. Um, and it's had very little activity in it. So uh, as part of the uh, general fund, uh, they want to simply close that and transfer it to the general funds uh, interest income account. So that's all we really know about that one. Is that four ninety nine? Um, going into one hundred five. Oh. No, the this will go to the uh, general funds in, interest income account. I, it, it's not the four ninety nine okay. account fund, but um, I think the resolution actually notes specifically the account number on there. Yeah, one hundred one. Yeah, it's, it's a different one than the four ninety nine fund. Okay. Uh, second and third items are ones with uh, TIF for the uh, the old downtown streetscape, and then the next one's the TIF for Malastrana. Those were both decertified back, um, I believe, in 2012. And with the dollars remaining uh, for the streetscape, the uh, nearly $80,000 uh, needs to go back to Scott County that they redistribute to other government entities. And then the Malastrana TIF, um, again, uh, as part of the uh, process in the decertification nearly 20,000 
will be distributed uh, back to uh, Scott County and they'll distribute that back out to the other government agency or, uh, or government entities that were involved in that uh, that TIF uh, process so and normally Mike says we usually get about uh, 48 cents on the dollar so about 48 percent would come back to the city mm -hmm. Moving along to special revenue donations, number 238. Um, most of these funds were actually taken in, um, in the mid-2000s, and a lot of it came in through, I don't know if any of you remember, there uh, was a local resident that did a couple of dog walks. Uh, I think it was called uh, Pets for All Parks or something like that. And um, it only took in a little over $800, and it just hasn't been much activity in there, but the, the auditors basically have had that assigned to the park equipment fund, which is to buy new park equipment and uh, have asked that it formally be transferred to the uh, park board's uh, oversight of the uh, 230 fund for that equipment. So that was really the intent anyway. I'll just keep a note kind of on an internal financial that we did get $850 from those walks and hopefully they can be used for, uh, the intent was for benches or something, uh, long trails at some point in the future. EMS building fund number 49, uh, these bonds were issued um, before the contract was awarded for the fire station project. And uh, with the bids basically came in uh, pretty favorable for that project. So that's why you see a uh, little over $800,000 800, uh, remaining. And uh, there is a little bit of an error on here in the narrative. It says that they'll be transferred to the Debt service fund number 384, it's actually the debt service fund number 374, and it actually is correct on your resolution. So I just want to make, make that clear. It's to the uh, 374 um, public safety fund is actually where it's going. So, And that'll be continued to be used for future principal and interest payments. Moving along to the debt service funds, um, I've had uh, some refinancing. Uh, that was done on those four bonds noted. Don't really have anything to note uh, on those except for the last on the water tower fund. Those are not paid for, by the general fund and therefore that's why you don't see any uh, notes further than that because it isn't paid by the, the tax, general taxpayers. So I'll have the note about that one. Well, uh, that'll be something the Utilities Commission is... Um, you know, I, I don't have any more detail oh. on that. I've Wish I could answer that for you. Okay. I would think so. I think it would go back. Being an enterprise fund, I believe that would be the case. Um, CIP 2001, um, all those principal and interest payments have been satisfied and actually showed a, a negative balance of uh, 88702 um, so that will be transferred over to the 2006D funds, which do have excess uh, available to cover. Uh, the uh, negative balance. I don't know why that was a negative balance. That's probably something that we could get information from Patty for you at the next meeting if you would want it, but that uh, that other fund uh, will, is able to cover that, so that was the main reason it's being transferred to the, that particular uh, 2006 D fund 389. And then finally, the library fund. This is from the uh, year 2000 project, and that work has all been uh, completed including principal and interest payments as for the the big addition uh, for the expansion of the library and those additional funds uh, about fifty eight thousand dollars will be transferred to the 499 fund which uh, as noted here is where um, in the past all debt service fund balances have been transferred and are essentially uh, in that 499 fund for future use by the city council for uh, projects that kind of come up uh, uh, over over time that maybe aren't necessarily anticipated or fit in a good category so geez Ken if that goes to the City Council I have a good place for that fund <laughs> what well, does I'm feeling you council. I know what you're talking about you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it goes and I think that that fund 499 is the fund that actually they use to to do the the parking lot by the baseball field and the road through uh, Memorial Park that was all handled by 490 money in the 499 fund. So it's kind of like for a special project, so they don't have to be bonded if we have enough uh, money there. So that's that's kind of the for catch. A lot of park projects have yep. been paid for out of there. Catch all uh, uh, 
for some. Well, why wouldn't we take this money and use it for things at the library? Like it seems like they always need a furnace or something. Well, I mean, I think it could be. I mean, it could be. It, it in this four ninety five nine fund, we actually, the council has uh, full control of that fund. So if if it if it needs to be used for the library, if it doesn't, uh, uh, I know we did talk about uh, in the budget process that uh, replacing some of those units, and I don't know where we left it. I can't remember, but I think we did have some to replace one of the units or something this yep. year. Yeah, we were gonna we were gonna definitely look at replacing uh, um, one furnace and one AC unit. Right. Uh, we're gonna see how long we can go. Probably, we can make it another year, and that's a good thing. But, but there's more, isn't there? Another there's a whole bunch of furnaces at the library, right? Yeah, there's five total. And more of them need to be replaced. Well, so. three of them are all about the same age, and if if that means you got to replace them today or tomorrow, um, as long as the money's in the budget. We're not just going to automatically go and throw it out. We're going to see how long we can go with it, and and probably can get a little more life out of them. You know, and if it goes bad, then we do have money budgeted for it. So, but you know, I, you know, I can see where you're going, but it doesn't necessarily mean uh, you know when you have a project, you know, because if if they don't need the money, you know, it's better to have it used where we can use it, where we don't have to bond for it or uh, take it out of some other budget type deal so okay any questions for Ken Pat Patty or Mike <laughs> and you're handling it all the relay day. any questions <laughs> that you have <laughs> you did a very well for it for not being an accountant I, I'll, I'll recommend you did a, you did a good job there Ken. <laughs> so it, um Chuck, in the resolution, it doesn't say the dollar amounts. That's okay like that? It just says the account numbers. And um, I guess I don't have a problem with that because I don't know if the... the, the it, do, it is noted specifically in here that the funds um, are preliminary amounts that are noted in the right. memo, okay. so yeah. that may change. That's, that's what I was going to say. Maybe in the audit. Maybe it'll be a, a There may be pennies. some differences once the audit goes through, so... Yeah. I don't think you want to limit yourself. So if you just say whatever is left in the balances, so, uh, the most important that, that part remember. is that it says closing. The closing, yeah. correct. So, so whatever is in there after all expenses are done. As soon as you said that, I remembered that I read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Any questions? If not, I guess I'll look for a motion to uh, approve the transfer of these funds. So moved. Second. I got a motion by Amy Jurek, second by Pat Scripture. Uh, any questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. Okay, Ken, you can relax now. <laughs> <laughs> Patty did did call me this afternoon and apologized that she wasn't going to probably be at the meeting because she didn't feel very well and she did ask me any questions, but I thought they were pretty. I thought it, it was pretty ex, you know, self-explanatory on on those. So I told her. Ken did just, a good job. Yeah, I told I her. I tried. Just, just get just get healthy. <laughs> Just get healthy. Uh, next thing on the agenda is the appointment uh, to the park board. Uh, we did have a couple interviews today. Um, and after the interviews, uh, I guess I would like to make uh, the appointment of Mike uh, Punchikar to the park board. Um, any questions or anything like that? If not, I guess I'm going to make a motion that we approve uh, Mike Punchikar as to fill in uh, the replacement of Amy Jurek's for the remaining of her uh, <coughs> tenure. So uh, I guess I'll make that motion. Second. Second by Dave Brujic. If there's any other questions, if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Okay, moving right along, consent agenda. Any questions? Uh, yeah, that St. Wenceslaus, they, they must just drink all the time over there. I think they do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there's no questions on anything, I guess I'll look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, I got a motion by Dave Brujic, second by Amy Jurek. So if there's no other questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. Consent agenda is passed. Now we're in the fun thing. Miscellaneous. 
Jim, do you have anything? I do not have anything. Okay. Glenn. Uh, just to uh, give you a little update, we had a baseball meeting uh, last week, Wednesday. Uh, went very well. IS Engineering came back with some, uh, again, uh, changes to design, uh, uh, more defined budget numbers. And our next meeting, next Wednesday, will he'll even have tighter numbers because they were able to kind of zero in on some things and, and also a recommendation of what INS Engineering thinks we should do in 2015, 16, 17, and going forward. So uh, um, the group's doing very well. Um, I think they all need uh, a round of applause and especially INS Engineering for the work they've done at this point for When's zero the next dollars. meeting? Next Wednesday. Nope, I'm sorry. A week from yeah. Wednesday. Uh, yes. 20, no. no, it'll 28th. be. 28th. No, it's 14th. Well, 14th is a Saturday. I'm not going oh, to. It, well, it's what? Two, no, it wouldn't be the 14th. It would be the four, 11th. Isn't it the 11th? be the 11th. 11th. February 11th. Yeah. Okay. 6 o'clock. At the? At City Hall and the council chambers upstairs. Okay. Yep. I'll try to put that on my calendar to make sure I go to. Yeah, make, they're a good, the group. Uh, good group of people. Um, they're taking quite an interest in it and, and uh, taking on the task, so I think it's it's going very well. Well, just knowing the group of people, you know, yourself and Dave and, and Mike Stika and Jerry Willarius, you know, those, uh, you know, I, I could really tell that uh, this was a group that had a, a very defined goal on what to accomplish, so, uh, you know. Yeah, I think it's going it, good. It, so. I do, you know, and I'm looking forward to it. Yep. I think it's going to be such an addition to the community once it's all said and done. So, definitely. Okay. Uh, that's all I got. Okay. Pat, anything? David? Yeah, I got a <clears throat> question for Glenn. Uh, the snowblower that we use to clean the sidewalks? Yep. It leaves a trail right down the middle of the snow? Is uh, it's probably something? when he's using the blade. Is but I'll check into it. Okay. I was just curious to know why it was. Maybe it is the blade. Yeah. It's what, a V blade? Yeah. Yep. He can, yeah. Uh, he can uh, straighten it out, he can wing it, or he can V it. Okay. And That's if they got it in was. a certain position, it's going to leave a track through the middle. Okay. But I'll check into it. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> Ken, do you know if the school district uh, voted on one or two referendums yet? They have not made not the decision on the question number yet. Okay. I think they're doing that next Monday at their workshop. Is that when it is? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's it. Okay. Amy, do you have anything? No. Patrick. Mary Jo. Boy, I thought she was going to get me again. <laughs> Ken? Enjoy the short meeting. <laughs> Enjoy the time. short meeting. Well, I'm not <laughs> done yet. <laughs> no, no. I, like I mentioned, I was at the LeSueur County uh, meeting on Thursday night uh, in Kilkenny, and uh, one of the things, and I did talk to Jim and, and Glenn about it, is um, Ann Traxer was there, who was the emergency uh, director for LeSueur County, and she talked about that, uh, what she recommended that uh, all city staff and elected officials have credentials. Uh, so Jim is going to look into that because... In time of emergency, it's a lot easier if, if we're wearing a credential when we have to uh, be dealing with people outside the city, uh, like you know officers or something like that. So um, she, because of the, some of the situations that uh, like Waterville had with their flood and FEMA people around, um, it was very nice that you know the the people who they were dealing with could see who they were dealing with. You know, if if, if it's council person or mayor or maintenance you know department head or something like that so jim's going to look into that and you know i think that's probably something that we should probably uh get for all uh, city employees and uh, elected officials so and the other thing on that uh, meeting um we talked uh, we had a lady from northfield um who was on uh, kind of their tourist there but she's also on the um, uh, southwestern tour tourism board for the state uh, and talked about uh, how do we promote, you know, LeSueur County and, and Northfield and that whole thing, you know. Uh, so the next meeting we are actually going to be doing a uh, workshop uh, kind of to bring ideas to the table to how to market, you know, LeSueur County, uh, you know, with the, the lakes, with Waterville and the, 
uh, state parks and things like that and try to you know look at it as like a region kind of similar to what um, and I'm sure it won't be as elaborate as that livability magazine that Scott County did that they put into to new businesses but uh, you know kind of on the same concept rather than you know try to have each community do its own effort trying to promote the whole uh, county as a whole so uh, I thought it was very uh, exciting and I think it was a good idea so that's all I had if there's nothing else I guess I'll make a motion to adjourn second second by Dave Brujic all in favor say aye Aye. 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 We're out of here. Oh. You're on good meetings, Jeff. Ten minute late start. We could